So the concept of the mole is crucial when you're doing chemical calculations because it lets us use numbers on a scale that we can actually wrap our heads around. If we consider reactions happening in terms of the number of molecules actually involved, the numbers quickly get out of hand. If, for example, you have five milliliters of water and they all react, that means you've got roughly two times 10 to the 23 molecules reacting. That's a ridiculously big number. So we cheat and we use the mole, which is a counting unit, kind of like a dozen, that gets our numbers onto a scale that is easier to work with. So the dozen is a very familiar counting unit. One dozen is 12 things. And if you want to rewrite that in uh, formula or uh, units expression, a ratio of units, it's 12 things per dozen. 12 eggs, 12 elephants, who cares? And a mole is very much the same kind of idea. One mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 things, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23 things per mole. And it has a special name, we call it Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number gets the little symbol NA. And this is a really important uh, piece of information because it lets us calculate and interconvert between things like molecular mass, mass, moles, and number of molecules. So now we're going to do a couple of examples where we use our conversion factors and use dimensional analysis to convert between uh, moles and grams or molecules and moles or any kind of combination of those items. Our first example is converting 0.317 moles of chlorine gas, diatomic chlorine, into grams of chlorine. And to do that, we start with our initial data. We have 0.317 moles of Cl2. And we need a conversion factor that converts us from moles to grams. And that's the molar mass, which has units of grams per mole. So what we do is we say, we have our data, we set up a ratio where we have the desired unit on top and the unit we already have on the bottom. And to find the molar mass of chlorine gas, you can either add up the individual atomic weights from the periodic table, or in this case, I've just given it to you on the left-hand side of the screen. It weighs 70.90 grams per mole. The moles cancel, and we're left with an answer in grams. And it weighs 22.5 grams. Our second example is converting molecules of HCl into moles of HCl. So we need to have a conversion factor that goes from molecules into moles. And this one's a little less obvious. What we do is we use Avogadro's number. Remember, Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 things per mole. It can be literally anything. So what we do is we say we have 3.10 times 10 to the 23 molecules, and it doesn't matter molecules of HCl, molecules of whatever, we know we have a certain number of molecules, and we want to convert it into moles. So what we do is we set up our ratio. We want moles, and we have molecules. We know that there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules in a mole, so we write that in. So we set up a ratio. We multiply by 1 over 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Our molecules will cancel, and we'll be left with 0.515 moles of HCl. The final example we've got will use a series of conversions. We want to go from grams of CO2 to atoms of oxygen. And this is a little more complicated. Uh, you can't find out the number of atoms or molecules directly from grams. You can only find that out from moles. So what we have to do is we have to get our grams of CO2 into moles of CO2. And then we have to convert our moles of CO2 into moles or molecules of CO2. And then from molecules of CO2, we can go to atoms of oxygen. So we have 15.0 grams of CO2. And the molecular weight of CO2 is given. We have 44.01 grams per mole. So one mole weighs 44.01 grams. So that means in 15 grams of CO2, you have 0 
moles of CO2. And in 0 0.341 moles of CO2, you have a certain number of molecules. You have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules per mole. The moles cancel, and you're left with 2.05 times 10 to the 23 molecules of CO2. And then we can convert directly to number of atoms. 2.05 times 10 to the 23 molecules of CO2. And now we have to do something a little bit different that we haven't done already. We have to say, for every one molecule of CO2, there are two oxygen atoms. And this is a reasonable statement to make. If you have one molecule of CO2, it has one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. So you can go from number of molecules to number of atoms using a ratio as well. We have two oxygen atoms for every one CO2 molecule. And the molecules cancel, and we're left with a number of atoms. So we have 4.10 times 10 to the 23 oxygen atoms.